Hello everyone, and we are here in Hodgenville, Kentucky for the birthplace of none other than the 16th president, Abraham Lincoln. Arguably the most well-known U.S. president, no, one of the most well-known historical figures of all time. Right here at the National Park. We're here in Western Kentucky, just outside of Louisville. As you can see, this is birthplace of National Historic Park. So, before we get into it, be sure to smash that like button and subscribe. And without further ado, let's -a go! All right, guys, check this out. That is the exact place that Abraham Lincoln was born. Inside there, they got a log cabin inside that is being preserved. Before we get started with the story, we're going to talk about his life and stuff. So, to start off, let's go back and talk about some of his ancestors and how they got to the Americas. So Lincoln comes from a came from a long line of colonists in the Americas. Um, one of his ancestors, his name was Samuel Lincoln, and he was born in 1622 in England, in Norfolk, England. And he arrived in Plymouth in 1637. And then they lived there for a few generations, eventually moving to New Jersey. Um, and then his grandfather, um, his name was Abraham Lincoln, and he uh, bought, uh, he was served in the Revolutionary War in the 1770s part of the militia, and then he bought some land out in what was Virginia at the time. This was Virginia at the time. Uh, now it's Kentucky. But he bought land out here and moved to somewhere right outside of in Jefferson County. Um, and he was actually killed by a Native American skirmish on a cemetery called Long Run Cemetery, which I will do a view uh, cemetery tour sometime. We can't sadly do it on this trip. Um, and then his father, Samuel Lincoln, um, in 1806, bought this property right here. This was the farm, and he bought this in 1806. Samuel Lincoln, who was Lincoln's grandfather. Uh, and Lincoln was born up there in February 12th, 1809. So this cabin is at least 213 years old. They have it in there to be preserved, of course. Um, so that's how that was. That's Abraham Lincoln's background. So he comes from a long line of uh, colonists from England. And uh, eventually they declared their independence and he's born up here in Kentucky. So this is like a whole park around here, a National Park Service for Abraham Lincoln's birthplace. This is the first memorial they did. This is actually older than the Lincoln Memorial in Washington, DC and his burial site, his current burial site, which is pretty cool. However, he's buried in Springfield. Uh, he's not buried here, but he was born here. Nancy Lincoln Inn right here. This is like a little, I guess, a hotel. Uh, the Nancy Lincoln Inn is a symbol of devotion to Abraham Lincoln's family from their early days of auto tourism. In 1928, James Howell built the inn and named it in honor of Lincoln's mother, uh, Nancy Lincoln. I forgot what her uh, maiden name was, but that's who that was. Uh, a number of motorists who are coming to rural Kentucky to visit Lincoln's birthplace in the memorial building. So they would stay here, especially back in the 1920s because the transportation wasn't as good. Um, so they would just uh, basically camp out right here and where he, yeah, right, right, his birthplace. Uh, Howell uh, was a descendant of Kentucky pioneers, who was Lincoln's grandfather, was a Kentucky pioneer, of course. Uh, he constructed the end in four cabins with large chestnut logs and red pine flooring. The 16 by 18 foot one room cabins were built to be similar to what we imagine Lincoln's cabin might have been. Uh, these kind of these cabins over here. Uh, this is what they would imagine that the original cabin looked something like this that he was built in. They built these around here. Um, the buildings were placed um, in the National Historic, on the National Register of Historic Places on the 10th of January, 1991. So it's been on there for about 31 years now. Um, here's how this is the guy who constructed the inn in the first place and opened it right there where he's buried. But like, look at this landscape. This is absolutely breathtaking. And this just goes to show how like, Lincoln again, another one of those guys that starts from absolutely nothing and works his way all the way up in the politics and eventually becomes president of the United States. Um, and he's obviously president during the Civil War and one of the most crucial hours in American history where we need a good leader. Um, and he did a great job. So here's a little, um, replica the the thing right up there so you have the building uh, once you go inside they have the exact cabin he was born in in there uh which we'll get to in a sec um let's see here this is the log cabin where abraham lincoln was born uh is destined to preserve all the union 
um, and free the slave. And he was born in that exact spot up there. Freaking insane. There's Lydia up there in the bench. Um, so yeah, freaking insane. And again, you know, Abraham Lincoln is such a popular guy and a lot of people, even in other countries, know who Lincoln is. I mean, you probably have him in your wallet right now if you have a $5 bill or a penny. This is so awesome. So he's born back in 1809, man. So very old, very old. Over 200 years, in fact. You got the ginormous pole with the American flag at the top. At the time when he was born, there were only 17 states. Uh, I think the I think there was only 17. But we're we're just gonna cut the corner right here and go down here. So this is the exact spot where the cabin was in 1809 when he was born. It was right up here. Um, so let's read this sign right here. See what we got. Encore for the threatened giant. Right here, settlers like Abraham Lincoln depended on chestnuts for both food and shelter. And in the early 1800s, chestnuts dominated the woods at the Sinking Spring Farm, which is what this was called. Uh, you could build everything from a log cabin to split rail fences using these tall, straight, rot-resistant trees. Uh, and both the people and livestock enjoyed the sweet taste of chestnuts. So that's what they rely on to survive. Oh, uh, this is just kind of photos and stuff. Picture of Lincoln. Um, Abraham Lincoln was a quite familiar frontier chores guy who split rails, as you can see right there. And this identification was a common... <laughs> Uh, with the common man helped him win the presidency because he thought people uh, thought that he was a nice man that could be recognized um, so as you see right here let's talk about um a lot of you probably know a lot about abraham lincoln so i'm just going to hit the highlights um talking about his life so he's born in 1809 in hodginson kentucky hodginsville at this exact spot he grows up on the farm right here in this exact area that we're in right now which is absolutely insane Oh, I can't believe he's... Abraham Lincoln grew up in this exact area. Freaking insane. If you, like, just take the time to take all this in and, like, ignore, ignore the cars and things. Oh, just yeah. insane. Anyway, so, yeah, he grew up there. Um, he did eventually get into politics later in life um, in the 1830s and joined the Whig Party. Uh, he served as a congressman from 1834 to 1840. 44, I think, something like that. I could be wrong. Something like that. And he strongly supported uh, presidential candidate William Harrison. This dude. He strongly supported President William Harrison in his run uh, for nomination in 1840 and Henry Clay in 1844. Eventually, though, he did run for the U.S. Senate in 1854. However, he lost um, his seat. He lost the seat uh, in the Senate. He uh, also did serve in the House of Representatives briefly between that period. And then in 1858, he ran again for the U.S. Senate against Stephen Douglas. Uh, however, he did end up losing that. Uh, and then two years later, though, he decided, you know what, we're going to score it big because the new Republican Party is now formed, and which had just been formed in 1856, but they lost to Buchanan. Um, so he joined the Republican Party and ran for president in 1860 and won. Right as he won, though, because the country was brewing on a civil war, because of the issue of slavery. And uh, the president at the time was James Buchanan. And right when Lincoln got elected, uh, South Carolina became the first state to, to secede in the Civil War um, in late 1860. And the current president at the time, James Buchanan, was like, you know what? All right. I'm just going to lay back until I retire. You know, they can all let them do what they want. Eh, who cares? So that's what Buchanan did. And then Lincoln's basically screwed. Because by the time he gets in office, he already has to deal with the Civil War starts and he's dealing with that his entire presidency um and one of his most famous accomplishments was the emancipation proclamation uh, which he signed in 1862 and went into effect in 1863 um, which basically freed all the slaves in the south um, which made northerners want to fight the war more um, also his gettysburg address one of the most famous speeches given in human history uh the four score and seven years ago that he gave in uh, 1863 at the, at the Battle of Gettysburg. Um, 
He also was president during the entire Civil War, and he, they did eventually lead us to victory, and the Union won, um, keeping the United States intact. However, though, just oh, just a measly five days after Robert E. Lee surrenders to Grant, um, he's at Ford Cedar watching a play, and he gets assassinated by John Wilkes Booth just five days after the Civil War ends. And his body was shipped to Springfield, Illinois, which is where he lived, spent most of his younger lives after the farm. So that is basically just, that's just a quick story of Abraham Lincoln's life. Um, obviously, one of the greatest presidents we've ever had in the history of the United States. So check this out. So he was born in this exact spot up here. Oh my gosh, it feels so weird to talk. And look at these stairs made out of like, I don't know what this is, marble? What do, you, what do you think about this? It's cool. It's freaking awesome. I don't know how you I don't know how you I'm pretty sure that my person is somebody down there in a wheelchair. <laughs> Because they got the, the big staircase up to it. And check out this view at the top. And again, you have to be here. If you ever find yourself in this area, I definitely recommend coming here. And camera is not going to do this justice. This is the best we can do, but you got to experience this. Oh my God. This, this just, this entire area just displays the rural Kentucky aspect so well. Um, Obviously, we're not going to be screaming his name for Smash because we only do that at burial sites. All right, guys, I was just editing this video, and I wanted to point out that there they actually have 56 steps up to the building because Lincoln lived for 56 years, so they have one step for every year he lived, so that was pretty cool. And to free the slaves, a grateful people have dedicated this memorial to unity, place of and brotherhood among these states. With malice towards none, with charity for all. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go, indeed. Oh, oh there's even more up here. You look so long, other people. Oh, you're really allowed to get in? Look. No, use your entrance. So this is the construction of the place, as you can see here, the Lincoln Farm Association. They built this between 1907 and 1911 to preserve what is thought to be Lincoln's birth cabin, National Shrine. Perpetuated his life. Um, so they built that um, preservation after the Civil War. Um, here's the uh, cornerstone of this building around it that was picked, taken in 1909. All right, here we have a lot of the stuff that Lincoln's on here. There's the cabin, which we're about to go see. This is when he was born, February 12th, 1809, so 213 years ago. Uh, here's the building on November 9th, 1811. Hey, it's Nathaniel's birthday. Heck yeah, dude. So here's a certificate that was given to every person who donated at least 25 cents to the Memorial Building Fund. So this was put, here's a photo of that. That guy looks like Theodore Roosevelt. I doubt that's him, though. You know, it might be. He was actually president at that it's time. It's him. Look. Oh, it is him. Holy crap. I was like, it looks like it. I didn't actually see that. President Theodore Roosevelt arriving to dedicate the construction of the memorial building on the 100th birthday on February 12th, 1909. Dang. Oh, that's awesome. Check that out. Here's my man. That looks like Taft. Holy crap. That's actually awesome. Here's the frontier scene. So the Lincolns uh, typified families who settled in Kentucky frontier in the early 1800s. They built a self. They built self-sufficient lives around the areas and natural resources. And at Sinking Spring Farm, they cleared the land to raise vegetables and use the trees to build and heat their homes. Hunted game and raised their children, Sarah and Abraham. So I guess they only had two children. Um, 
son and a daughter, which is kind of rare, honestly, because a lot of families back then had a lot of kids. Maybe they had kids that died in childbirth. Or something. I don't know. Uh, whatever they used to say. Nathaniel's birthday. Freaking awesome, dude. All right, so here's the exact cabin that he was a born in. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Here's the Lincoln Memorial. See, the Lincoln Memorial wasn't put in until 1922. Um, this was put here in 1911. So this is actually 11 years older than the Lincoln Memorial. So this is the exact building that the man, the myth, the legend was born. I don't think you're going to touch it. I touched the building Abraham Lincoln was born in. Hey, right. check this out. So this is the exact. Look how little this is. Look how little this is, dude. This is the building. So that was pretty sweet. The cabin was right here, and they built this thing around the cabin, which is kind of interesting. You don't really see that too much. But that was what happened. I wasn't filming right now. I literally just come here and sit here for hours. Just take in the history of this place right here. And just imagine the lifestyle of the, uh, of the 1810s and when he grew up. What they had to go through and stuff. And I think they, they kept the nat the nature, the natural vibe of the place. And I think this is probably what it looked like. Something like this in 1809. This literally looks like 1809 out here, which is crazy. It's, it's just, you can't even comprehend really what is going on in here. Let's sit here. Don't step in that. That's where they got all their water from, I guess. This photo from back in the day, back in the 19th century. Now we can get water. Right here. Looks like they're out in that fountain. Well, maybe they don't have water in the fountain anymore, but you know, area closed. All National Park Service area beyond this point closed to public use because of emergency conditions. So I don't want to get myself killed, so I don't want to go down there. Six feet distance. So yeah, the, they had one guard in there just to make sure no one tries to come in and uh, destroy the place because this is that is a very precious building inside of it. Oh, it's crazy. It's crazy how that thing's still a thing. I think they used other things to try to rebuild it a little bit. I think they tried to rebuild. I read something online. They actually tried to rebuild the log cabin, so it's not actually in that good of condition. They used other stuff to rebuild back on, but that's the main part, and that's mainly where it is. Because, you know, how are you gonna have a log cabin still around from 1809? Like, that's ridiculous. And saying, like, how long ago that was. It's crazy. The president, when he was born, was freaking Thomas Jefferson. Okay, They're just putting that in back. Get this out. This is an old wall I was put in here. Obviously, uh, even though Lincoln was born in Kentucky, he completely opposed slavery because he moved to Illinois later in life, a northern, northern state, of course. Uh, after this, you get the Boundary Oak. This, this put, was put here in apparently 1976, and you can see this is the original diameter. Interesting. That is original. This is probably, this is definitely added later. President Roosevelt was the guy that, that uh, Theodore Roosevelt was the guy that put it in. And of course, that's cool. There's a picture of him walking up there. So you got ties with multiple presidents there. Again, just a great view. There's a squirrel running through the yard. This just goes to show the the rural Kentucky area and what they had to go through. Time of his birth and stuff. Again, February 12th. Um, that was only like less than a week ago was the time of filming. Uh, so we just missed his birthday. Uh, kind of sucks, but. It is President's Day 
on Monday, which is the day you're seeing. All right, so with that, thank you guys for watching. Be sure to comment, like, subscribe, and I just wanted to get do a little video for President's Day visiting Abraham Lincoln's um, birthplace, which is absolutely insane. If you ever get the chance to come down here, highly recommend it. Um, so with that, have a good pres rest of your President's Day, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.